Hey guys, Dylan Loomis here. If you missed part one of this series, be sure to check that out at the conclusion of this episode. The video will be linked at the outro of this video. As promised, I want to touch on the selection of the ionic liquid electrolyte that was used in this research as well as contextualizing what this research really means for the real world and commercialization. I covered in part one the use of a multifunctional interlayer between an LAGP electrolyte and lithium metal anode, which is designed as a hybrid paste formed by ball milling of LAGP nanoparticles in a room temperature ionic liquid, denoted as IL. The functionality of this interlayer stems from the high ionic conductivity of both of these components and the formation of a chemically stable interface on the lithium metal anode by a controlled breakdown of the ionic liquid. Thus, the LAGP IL interlayer, which has very high thermal stability and is non flammable, is able to physically separate the LAGP electrolyte and the lithium metal, which suppresses the degradation reactions and any thermal runaway. If you're lost in this moment, be sure to catch part one. I did get a few questions from part one on whether or not the hybrid paste used in this research would leak out of the battery cell. I'd like to report on what the research had to say with regard to this matter. In general, a certain external pressure is applied to lithium batteries in order to maintain good contact between the components during cycling, and this is especially true in the case of solid state lithium batteries. For cells with a liquid component, this pressure will squeeze out the liquid, in this case the ionic liquid electrolyte, if it is solely placed between a solid state electrolyte, in this case the LAGP, and the lithium metal anode. Mixtures of ionic liquids with nanoparticles like fume silica have been reported to form quasi-solid state nanocomposite ion gels. In this study, the researchers chose to mix LAGP nanoparticles with the ionic liquid to form a gel-like hybrid paste with considerable retention of the liquid component under external pressure. Previous reports have shown that the addition of LAGP particles in hybrid electrolytes is beneficial for enhancing lithium ion migration, which of course is a positive for the performance of the battery. When the mass of the LAGP nanoparticles is above 50%, the paste does not flow for more than 24 hours in a sample tube inversion test, thus showing a strong gelation. And guys, real quick, as you watch the remainder of this video, let me know below how you would grade Elon from A to F in terms of how he's handled leading Tesla thus far in 2020. I'm honestly really interested to hear what you think. I'm going to put my opinion down there below and I think it should make for some very good discussion. So once again, as you watch the rest, let me know down below. Full disclosure, the chemical makeup of the ionic liquid electrolyte used is going to be beyond the understanding of most of us. And rather than getting too far into the weeds, I'll let you take a quick look for those interested. To keep things simple and understandable, here are the key takeaways with regard to the ionic liquid. A majority of this study involved preparing a stable hybrid interlayer by screening ionic liquids that were used previously that have shown good performance in lithium battery applications. To form ionic liquid based electrolytes, lithium salts with the same anion were added. All of the ionic liquid based electrolytes show a high room temperature conductivity. Once the premier ionic liquid was chosen, it was tested to evaluate the compatibility with a lithium metal electrode in which galvanostatic cycling and electrochemical impedance spectroscopy or EIS experiments were performed. EIS is one of the most complex techniques in electrochemical research. So just know that it's an electrochemical analysis technique which finds a lot of application in studying batteries, fuel cells, and many other systems. During galvanostatic cycling of batteries, the charge and discharge currents are often expressed as a C rate, calculated from the battery capacity. The C rate is a measure of the rate at which a battery is charged or discharged relative to its maximum capacity. A 1C discharge rate would deliver the battery's rated capacity in one hour. 
I do want to make it clear that as I report on these battery advancements, we all need to be on the same page in that research in the lab can and does often take years to ever see commercialization on any scale, if at all. With that being said, I believe every advancement is important for the researchers to make public as each advancement can be seen as being one step closer to the finish line of bringing a true solid state battery to market. Of course, once the finish line is crossed, a new one will be on the horizon, but you understand the point I'm attempting to make, albeit poorly. The researchers that contributed should be mentioned here, so I will list their names on the screen and you can take a quick look to see if you recognize any of the names. And of course, solid state batteries still remain anywhere from three to seven years away from commercial application. It should also be mentioned that when a solid state battery is ready for production and real world application, it will not be seen in EVs first. Auto manufacturing is a large scale operation and this technology will need to be tested and proven on a much smaller scale before any automaker chooses to outfit a production line and everything that will go into making an EV with a solid state battery. The good news is Tesla has already found a way to make a stellar EV without solid state battery technology by pushing the limits of lithium ion batteries and doing it in a safe fashion. They continue to make incremental improvements and iterations so even if solid state batteries don't make it to EVs anytime in this decade, Tesla will still have a path to mass market adoption with the path they are currently on iterating the liquid electrolyte lithium ion battery technology. Any solid state breakthrough will only enhance the adoption rate, but I do not believe it will be required to continue Tesla's growth trajectory over the next 15 years. I want to say thank you to all of our Patreon supporters. I really appreciate all of you as I work toward being able to report on Tesla and battery technology full time. Please subscribe to the channel if you're not already, as I'll now be covering a weekly Tesla news wrap up every Sunday to bring you the highlights from the Tesla news cycle each week in a clear and concise fashion. It's tough to keep up with everything at times, so I plan to simplify that endeavor for everyone. I'll see you guys in the next episode.